Oh man, who we have here, man. We didn't hit him with the unexpected, man. Rainwater. Oh yeah, yeah. What it do? What it do? Man, how you doing, man? You know, everybody in the city has done an interview with you since, you know, the 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 tragedy that happened, you know, but I, I sit back because we me and you talk, you know, pretty often. Right. So we never really did it in an interview format, but it's the perfect timing. Right, 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 right. And you know, a lot of people, life goes on, shit happens, but where are you at mentally right now? Like, what what's your current state? You know, you lost your artist. Um, he he his song's going amazing right now, but mentally right now, where are you? What's your current state? Uh, at first I was moving so much that I wasn't. I was I was trying not to think about it. So you know, uh, I was doing a lot of drinking, a lot of partying. I was just trying to keep moving to not think about it. But uh, I'm in a good mind frame now. Uh, yeah, I'm in, the, I'm in the excellent mind frame now. I had a child, so it, it kind of settled me down. So I'm sitting at the house and putting everything back together. But when after he died, I was just in a rush and I was in a panic mode just to stay on top. You know, uh, in this rap game, in this market, you know, uh, I don't know how to not be on top. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, you know, I had to try to put everything back together. But, uh, I mean, that was the most dramatic thing I ever dealt with in my life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, for the first month, two months, three months, it was, you know, it wasn't the same rainwater. I mean, as expected. That was your that was your your life, you know. Main Mo yeah. was your best friend. Um, you know, you've mentioned some things like, you know, you having to sell your jewelry and and I'm only mentioning this because people mentioned you setting them up and yeah. things like that. And you you even had to come out and be like, yo, this didn't help me financially. This hurt me. Oh yeah, hell no. Nah. It set me back. It set me back to the beginning. Yeah. We just we 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 finally made it out the hole in the wild clubs. And now I gotta take my new orders back into the hole in the wild club. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, that uh, you know, that that hurt me tremendously. Like, you know what I'm saying? That was one, that was one of that's a life. That hurt me worse than going to jail. Because if I go to jail, I would prepare to get out and start all the way over. But, you know, you wake up one morning and you just got to start all the way over. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that was a... Uh, I wouldn't wish that on no manager or nobody, period, to lose no one, lose a person that you've talked to or close to for the last six, seven years. Right. Um, you know, you, you, you came out and exposed yourself basically saying you sold... You had to sell personal things and ask your mom for um, money and things like that. Like, it, it, was that like real? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. At the time, you gotta think about it. Two thousand twenty, when two thousand twenty started, it was COVID, right? So all the shows was completely canceled. So then, after COVID, I mean, in the middle of COVID, I had to get a hip replacement. So, you know, and then after that, me and three finally get back on the road a little bit. We did two shows and then he died. So mm. all those deposits I had to give back. Everything that he didn't complete, it was on me now. Even the money, you know, a manager only get twenty percent of a show. So if a show book for twenty thousand and I get that twenty percent, I still gotta give back the money I gave him. So, you know, people was wondering, like, you know, uh, Ryan, you uh you profit? Nah, hell no. And then Man Mo 3 wasn't on contract. We was like, we, we actually went half on a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, we went half on a lot of stuff. Like, most of the studio time, he, he can record and leave and know a uh, rainwater take care of it or anything. A video, you know, we never, we never, when Mo 3 was alive, we never used a label budget for those type of things. I didn't know, you know what I'm saying? I know now, but at the time, I didn't know that you can you can invoice a label for that. So we paid for everything, had 50-50. Damn, so when you first met Mo3, it was no contract. Oh, no contract at all. And, uh, you know, I built I built my trust with him. And, and and he built his trust with me. See, I had to trust him to know that I'm going to give you all I got and you're not going to leave me. And he had to trust me to say... I'm gonna put everything in your hand and you ain't gonna fuck me over or leave me. So right. we like like at the time, like we needed each other. So, you know, uh, you know, 
Mo3 dealt with two millionaires, individual guys before he met me. So, you know, you know, he trusted the broker. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's a it's a it's a janky game. It's it's a doggy dog world in this music industry. Right. No contract. You know, I know everybody's in Mo 3's ear talking about Mo, you know, Rainwater's janky and right. don't don't fuck with him. He did me this way back in the day. How did y'all get through that? Cause you said you had to build your trust. Uh it was just different situations, you know, like different situations with three uh you know, at the time though, you know, we can't we made it with each other. And so um you know, sometimes we went over each other's house and ate. You know what I'm saying? What you cooking? We can come over there. You know what I'm saying? Or, or what you got going on? Like, so you know, we uh we survived with each other. When it's time to go on the road, we put our money together and go to them shows. You know, when it was time for the when it was time to come out with his first CD, his first mixtape album, even the per the person I ain't, the person that was around Mo Three before I met him. Wouldn't even put in on this first album, so you know what I'm saying. So me and Mo Three, he asked somebody in his circle, and I asked somebody in my circle. And we put that money together, and that's how he printed up the first shot of CD ever. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So you know, uh, we just we felt like, we felt like we came up together. Like when we first bought our first cars, we, we you know what I'm saying like we came up together. I always say Mo Three was the last artist I think we've seen in America to really break through selling CDs. Like Mo three peaked right when CDs were coming obsolete. Right. I don't believe he's the last artist though. Uh, Who's I the be- last? I believe Dun Dun and Number Seven go sell a lot of a lot of CDs too. You you think CDs are still a thing? Yeah. Uh, Mo three last CD, um, the Shadows Forever CD album. I sold those for a hundred dollars. CDs. Yeah. Crystal discs. Yeah. I, yeah. I saw I, uh, uh, physical copies. I sold those. For, uh, those those were selling for a hundred dollars. I paid when, for Mo Three listening party with with those. Like no disrespect, Mo Three. It's Mo Three. He's deceased. Like th- them CDs are mem- that's memorabilia at this point, right? Kick up and coming artists. Can yeah. they still move CDs? How how Mo Three was doing it? It's uh, it's twenty twenty one. Uh, I be- I believe I believe that's how I'm gonna kick off their career off them CDs. So they might not do it as, just like Mo Three, but everybody don't have everybody don't play. Everybody don't have a Zilla record. Everybody in their cars don't have Bluetooth. It's somebody in America and somebody hood that's still riding around with them CD players in their car. They just didn't go away. So um, uh, my promotion skills when they album drop, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna print up I'm gonna print up about ten thousand CDs and give them away free to the local uh, stores and 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 I'm gonna give them away free till people want to buy them. Okay, and I remember talking to Mo Three in the interview. This was probably five years ago, and he told me that he made well over a hundred grand off selling CDs. Oh yeah, he earlier. did. Yeah, he did. He did. He shocked me because I wanted to give them away. So, so like the CDs that we printed up, you know, I used my money for my my half. He used we went half on it, so we split it down the middle. So after we split it down the middle, three took his CDs and sold them. But I passed mine out so people could know who Mo Three is. But he had, but he shocked me though, like. He had cars pulling up. You'll think he was selling drugs. He was just selling CDs. Yeah. And all this, I remember he told me he was just posted outside. He used to rap for people. And and then people would be like, damn, man, here, here go five, ten dollars. Like this when nobody knew him. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, yeah, because he, you could just tell him a rap, he'll rap. Every time Mo3 dropped a mixtape, he bought a new chain and a car. So if you go back and see them pictures. Every picture that you seen, the first app, the first um shotters, he didn't have a he didn't have no he didn't have he had he didn't have no jury on. Second shotters, he had jury on. He just upgraded every album. Even to the day, even to the day he, he passed away. Like the last Osama chain, he went to go buy a sixty, seventy thousand dollar big gorilla chain. Platinum, you know what I'm saying? So I fuck with number seven. Uh-huh. I love Don Don music. But I, I just don't think the Mo three Blueprint could be duplicated. I just uh I believe uh I believe Dun Dun gonna be Dun Dun's gonna be huge. Yeah, I'm no and, yeah. And, and, and I'm not saying he's not gonna be huge, but the CDs, the the struggle, the you know, Mo 3, he he had to go through hoops, you know, the the, the fake watch busters. I don't think that shit could be yeah, duplicated. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now nah, now nah, nah, some some of the obstacles that he went through, he, nobody could ever go through that again. You know, uh that's why 
I always told people, even when he was alive, people didn't understand that the stuff that Mo3 had to go through, nobody in the state of Texas had ever had to go through that. Because they follow protocol. Three ain't never follow protocol. I ain't never follow protocol. So we know we stood out and did what we thought was best. You know, um, you know, when I met three uh, and really I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna say it like this, I changed the game in Texas. Because when I bet three, everybody was on this fast-paced club tempo type of music, even Houston. Houston had, had outgrew j Dog, and they was trying to find themselves into this fast-paced club music, too. Mm. You know, Dallas, that's all it was on. And I kept telling three, the more you show your pain and sing your pain, you know, it go change the game. I remember to this day, people didn't know. People always said Mo Three Music would never make it this far because it wasn't a club songs. And now it's basically the sound of Dallas. Dallas actually got their own identity right now. Everybody trying to sound like Mo Three. Everybody trying to sound like Mo Three. You know what I'm saying? If a Mo Three song come on, it sound like they in church because the whole club singing now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Mo Three took it possible for a street nigga to make. A club nigga and a person who doing negative find Jesus through his music. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, I preached that to him at the early age because if people go listen to Mo Three first songs, he was doing a lot of rapping in, you know. And we, you know, we grew together, you know. Right. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> like I spoke on earlier, a lot of people have this theory of you setting up Mo Three, like you had something to do with it. Where did that come from, and how does that make you feel knowing that you got to start all the way over, and people are thinking that you turned against your own artist? Uh, I never, let me tell you, I never walked down the street. You know, I was outside a lot. You know, I never walked down the street and somebody said, you said Mo3. It was mostly the internet. You know, the bloggers, a lot of bloggers made a living off saying, coming up with these theories about what happened to Mo3. And all of them is the false theory just to get clicks and, and bait, you know what I'm saying? Clicks and money. So, you know, um, I believe it just came from the bloggers, but um, it just came out of nowhere, you know, and uh, the simple fact that they never met Mo3. You know, like I know, if 3 was alive right now, he'd be cussing every last one of them motherfuckers out. <laughs> you know, and, and they go too far now. They, 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 they use this sacrifice word and... They sacrifice this. They people sacrifice that. You know, I watched them do Suge Knight like that. I watched them do Pity like that. So I guess it's a blessing in the sky because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, um, when a rapper involved in street activities, I mean, they're not even big enough to get sacrificed. Anybody get sacrificed ain't involved in no street activities. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you know, uh. You know, you know, it came from the, it, it came, and I ain't gonna say all bloggers, it came from YouTube bloggers. You know. Consp conspiracy theorists. Yes, yes, yes. And half of them, they ex-rappers. You know what I'm saying? They used to be rappers, so. I, I called you one day and I told you that Mo3, Mo3 got a lot of people jobs. Like, when he passed, a new age, a new era of, of, of YouTubing came in Dallas. Like yeah. I remember five years ago it was corny to be a blogger. They called yeah. you a square. They called you a nerd. Yeah. They they called you a reporter. And it's like some of these guys that I see now, like you said, were rappers back then, they used to call blogging lame. Right. But right. they picked up a, they picked up a camera. So that's why I called Because they asked they make it. They ain't make it. You know what I'm saying? The worst thing you could deal with in this game is an ex rapper. Because he gonna do whatever it takes to, to shit on you, cause he didn't make it where you was at. Yeah, man, it, it, it's crazy. Cause it's like five years ago, blogging wasn't the thing, bro. Like it was, it was things street niggas didn't do. Like street niggas didn't blog. Now all the street niggas is blogging now. Man, you, you know, know what I'm saying? Tell me about it. Tell me yeah, about man, it. But but crazy. I'm not gonna lie to you. And I want to tell all the rappers though. Let me tell you this. Uh, you know, a lot of I see a lot of rappers, you know, uh, they sell their soul to these bloggers. 
And mm. and what I say this is they do anything it takes to go go viral. Definitely. Right? I but, agree. But if someone get killed, they're not going to the funerals. The blog is not helping them with their kids. Mm. So, you know, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes people listen to these bloggers or they believe in them, like, you know what I'm saying? But you know, sometimes it's the wrong avenue to take. You know, uh, I know some people, the bloggers on YouTube, they sending them cash apps. So they, it's like their own congregation, like preaching. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, you know, uh, and it's crazy. You you spoke, you said that, um, because when Mo3 passed, a lot of people were mad at me. Um, me and Mo3 spoke often. I spoke, I spoke to everybody often. It was times where as though. I said I called Trap Boy. I would call another artist. I would call Mo3. Yo, what can we do to make things work? Um, so people were mad at me. But you called me one day on the phone and we were speaking, and you felt as though this whole thing started in Fort Worth. If the Fort Worth incident didn't happen, he'd still be alive. Yeah, yeah. It was, a, it was let me tell you like this. As I just said, it was another artist that did anything to go viral. Man, fuck it. No, no, no. We're not mentioning no names. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, not, yeah, yeah. I, I, no. I, I'll get down to the real. Look, it was an artist in Fort Worth that did anything to go viral. Now, he fucked up the whole culture in Fort Worth. You know what I'm saying? Because Fort Worth culture and sound was about telling stories and getting money. Twisted Blacks made they, they culture. You know what I'm saying? Then you had the, the Trap Squad, the Trap Star, I mean, Trap Squad. You know what I'm saying? So there's always talking about getting money. Well, when these individuals came out, when this one particular individual came out, he talked about killing and and robbing and and and, and not even selling dope. He wasn't. He not even talking about making money. He was just talking about killing and robbing. And he did anything he can to the internet to go viral. And it just fucked up the whole BFW. From this one individual doing anything to go viral. So many people done died from Fort Worth to Dallas. Some people done got so many people done got locked up because this host, this one individual, he made it a trend to go viral. That's it. Off your page, off your page. <clears throat> Definitely. I mean, at that time, Fort Worth was heavy on say cheese. Right. It, it, it was undeniable. Right. But how does that carry over to Mo Three though? Uh, Mo three was the hottest person in uh in DFW at that time, and another person was the hottest person on the internet at that time. So when Mo three went to his city, it was like I'm not even getting booked in my own city. So you know, an incident took care of uh, happen, and you know they almost took Mo three live that day. You know what I'm saying? And when we got back to the city, the individual from Fort Worth used another rapper in Dallas as a pun. I'm going to go over and kick it with, you, with him. So when Mo3 and that person got into it, it the, the rapper from Fort Worth, I'm going to stay out the way man, and, and go call some more static in my city. Now these two into it. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't put I wouldn't blame one person for, for the Fort Worth situation because although you think this individual caused Fort Worth to be what it is today, Chicago did that in 2012 and it affected the world. Uh they were not on Chicago shit. They was on some Fort Worth, they was on some they was on some going viral off say cheese and Fort Worth and DFW shit. They they weren't they weren't out they weren't out talking about they weren't beefing about the same shit. Chicago shit. It wasn't nobody died. They just dried. I'm finna go viral. After the Fort Worth shit, the guys went on the internet and bragged about what happened. He went straight to the internet. So it, 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 it went. It, you know, they were so they were so they were so they were so determined to go viral. You know what I'm saying? Not not even selling no records. Buddy wasn't even selling no records. He wasn't. He wasn't making no real rap money. He wasn't selling out no shows. He just wanted to go viral on say cheese. Okay, 
Now, let me play. Oh, flip, let me flip the coin around. Right. There were some times there were more Mo3 pool stunts. No, tell me one stunty pool, because the only, only, only thing Mo3 went viral off are real life situations. We never sit there and, 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 and say, we're going to do this as a stunt. It was real life situations that we took advantage of. Okay, I can't argue with that. It, it was things, a cause and effect things to where Mo3 would go viral, like the airplane situation when he was caught right. flying spirit or right. some shit like that. Yeah. And he would reply to it and it would go even more viral. Fake, fake watch busters. Three, three, didn't know, three didn't know that that watch was fake. He ain't never seen no real uh, no real watch like that in his life. I ain't never seen no real watch like that in his life. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, three didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it, it wasn't never a no situation that we tried to go viral. Okay. The Fort Worth situation happens. I'm about to get deeper into this. Yeah. They, they shoot pick six, right? Right. You interviewed them after that. I interviewed everybody. Right. At that time, I'm doing all the interviews. The fans, if you go back to Pick 6 right now and read the YouTube comments, the fans are asking, why isn't Mo3 on the record? I asked Mo3 in the interview, the fans want to know, why are you not on Pick 6? I'm not even knowing what the fuck's going on in Fort Worth. You feel me? I'm not knowing. At this time, I'm flying from Miami to, to New York. I'm not knowing what's going on. That's when, you know, this... The pulling up and the videos and all that shit happened. Do you feel like not being on pick six was a, another situation? Nah, that nah, I feel like this. Shit? Every single last one of them was against Mo3. Because, because, he, because he started his own lane. He wasn't in the clubs like that. He was selling CDs. He was packing out his own show. He was charging more than everybody on that show at that, on that song at that time. Every single last one of them artists was against Mo3. They hated him. It, that song was a click up, and we go try to beat Mo3 out. I can't say they hated him because there's pictures of them before. Before. Be, hold up. Before, they were pictures of them before the Fort Worth stuff. After the Fort Worth incident, and Buddy out there was the hottest outside of Mo3, it was Mo3 than him. Everybody clicked up on his side. We, on your, we pick your side. Because we can't get nothing out of Mo3. We can't get no videos out of Mo3. We can't, Mo3 ain't finna, Mo3 ain't finna, uh, he ain't finna shout us out. He ain't finna give us no clout off his name, so we gonna use your clout. Let's all, everybody come over here. Let's go over here to this side to take down Mo3. I believe that night in Fort Worth that, that people put that in that boy's head to take down Mo3. Because if a real a rapper at that time would have called him and said, say, bro, that was lame what you did to Mo3. That was lame what you did. But see, nobody wanted to burn their bridge with him. Either you go, you on Mo three side, or you on this boy side. You know what I'm saying? Mo three ain't finna give us no clap. We finna go on this side. You know what I'm saying? And so, and so, hold up. The whole Dallas, the whole Dallas rap scene. I watched the whole Dallas rap scene flip on him. You know, the only person that Mo three had that was in the industry that was somebody was Roy Lee. You know, that boy in Fort Worth jumped Roy Lee, kicked him all in his mouth. I mean, I, I mean, not jump Roy Lee. Roy Lee was trying to fight him. And, 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 and they tried to jump Roy Lee. They had an issue with Roy Lee, the dude in Fort Worth. Came back, the dude in Dallas jumped him twice, kicked him all in his mouth. Nobody had no justice for Roy Lee. You know, until Mo3 turned into Osama. So the night in Fort Worth was between two rappers? Yeah. It had nothing to do with the city, the community. It was just two rappers. Fort Worth love Mo3. Okay. And you think if that situation didn't happen, everything would have been painted different? Yeah, Dallas would still be Dallas would still be together. You know, just before that, let me tell you this, just before that, just before that situation in Fort Worth happened, we was all together. Yellow, Freddie, three. Was all booked? I booked them out. Everybody was booked at Houston at Super Bowl. Paul Wall, uh, it was some old Houston rappers in there, and we walked in there as a unity, like a hundred deep. And nobody had a problem with each other, and, and, and we took over the whole club for like two hours, a Houston club, and it was Super Bowl weekend. And it, you know what I'm saying? So it was I remember over. That. It was over a thousand people, and so I you know, that. you know, 
My I DJ was DJ Mo3 DJ was DJ because of other people. They the other rappers they didn't have no DJ, and and and, and we we orchestrated everything. You go up first, you go up second, you go up next. You know what I'm saying? And Dallas was together, but you know, Buddy and Fort Worth was just trying to get clout. He wanted clout so bad, and nobody would sit him down and say, "Hey, bro, that ain't the road. That, that ain't the route to take." But you know, at the end of the day, like you know, I feel like uh. Yeah, he's the cow. He was the cows of outlet, you know. Outlet, you know. Big D asked you in the interview, "Do you feel like it could have been avoided?" You know, you got people in the city who can call all three of them. Um, you felt like people were playing both sides, or they were scared of one guy and they didn't want to end the relationship with the other guy. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I tried yeah. to call all three of of these guys. Yeah, you did. You you know. Um, I did an interview with Mo3. You were there. You know, what can we do to to make matters? And this was before I think anybody passed away. Um, but uh, you know, do do you feel like all this could have been um swept under the rug and everybody uh, could have If they would have did it at an early at, at an early time, but you know, I believe the whole city of Dallas was rooting for them for the, for for Mo3 to get took out early. And then after they why, realized why you, that, why do you say that? Wait, why do you say because, that? Because because Mo three never got showed the love and this type of support that he needed, and the type of uh, you know, the type of uh pedestal, and 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 we gonna put you up here with the greats. You making good music, and you out selling out every show, and you selling CDs like crazy, and people are singing word for word to multiple songs since two thousand fourteen. Since hold your tongue, people been singing words from him. And so they doubted him so much until they realized, damn, we gotta, we just gotta accept it. Now y'all into it, okay? Damn, nothing happened to Mo Three. You know, damn, damn. You remember that, you remember that first time people said Mo Three got shot? Oh, boy, the internet went nuts. They loved it till the video come out and Three said, "Why, why, I, 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 they wanna hate on me?" And it, it like it's like it's like they, it let them down that nothing happened to them. You see what I'm saying? This time right here, you know, when people find out he passed away, he's still on top, and he's still like nothing. He ain't went nowhere. You know what I'm saying? And and, and you know, people still they hate that. They, 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 they you know what I'm saying? Like so, I I believe deep down the soul, my soul, that you know, uh, uh, people didn't like three from the beginning. How many unreleased records does he have right now? <laughs> I got about three albums, four albums. Damn. Because I remember you told me Mo3 would go in and knock out three songs and then walk out the studio. Yeah, he he, he, he knocked out three songs every time he went in there. He, 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 his work ethic was was uh, hard. Like uh, I made sure and he made sure that I he outworked any artist and I outworked any manager. So I got a... Uh, we still got a movie coming out of Mo3. Uh, I got about five videos. About four albums. We ain't and we, now, we haven't even gotten the R and B albums. The R and B albums was for sure go go. Shit. And outside is about to go platinum. Yeah, outside outside is just outside just went go. Uh Broken Love just went platinum. Three or four three or four more albums. Oh, we got a lot of, we got a lot more hits. Like um oh, we got a lot more hits. Before we go on to the next subject, a lot of people are arguing now. It's like <laughs> it's, it's like Mo Three can't win. It's like you know, I seen some shit the other day. Did Bobby did Bobby Billions put on Mo Three or did Mo Three put on Bobby Billions? Oh yeah, um, Bobby held his nuts on Three when he was alive. Bobby called me and asked for the Mo Three promotion on Mo Three channel. I charged him five hundred dollars. Mo Three put it on his channel. After a while. Bobby kept, I stayed kind of in contact with Bobby off and on. Bobby, I kept, I asked Bobby where you're from. He said, Oh, Cliff. But Bobby told me out of his own mouth that, you know, they didn't fuck with him. He didn't know none of them. He didn't know nothing about them. They didn't fuck with him. Mo3 was the first artist to put him on his pedestal. You know what I'm saying? So, um, after Mo3 recorded the song, nobody heard it. So I called Bobby and said, Look, <clears throat> we're putting together Mo3 album. Uh, I think we'll try to give you like I want to say between twenty and thirty thousand for the song, and uh, Bobby told me no. His team felt like his team felt like that the song will go do what it do regardless. 
Okay, and you were gonna buy it outright, which means he wasn't even gonna have the song at all. He, he was wasn't gonna, gonna still, be a feature. He, he was still gonna be on the song. Mo okay. three told told us that we, he didn't want to take him off the song. He was still gonna be on the song. Bobby Bobby said his team said no. This was in September. Two months later, Mo three called me and said, "Fuck that song." Two months later, Mo three passed. I just see the whole internet posting Mo three in the kitchen, like singing the song. So I called Bobby back, said, Bobby, look, man, uh, man, we gotta work something out, bro. Uh Mo3 recorded the verse two months ago, but you know, Bobby's didn't never hear it. So I said, I'm gonna work something out with Empire where it's a Mo3 and Bobby Billion. So he said, okay, cool. So uh right now we're dealing with the whole who's over Mo3's uh estate. So I wake up one morning, Blueface flew Bobby out there. And did a video for it back in November, a week after Mo3 died. Blueface is already shooting a video in a verse to the song because now the, the song is doing so much number after Mo3 passed. But they never heard Mo3 verse; they just heard him the freestyle. So I called Bobby back. I got I got Empire on the phone. I'm like, bro, we got to get this song. So I made a I made a business decision to make that make sure that song get on that album because uh, you know, I didn't want nobody to to just profit and win out that song when. when Mo3 Legacy is what made that song what it is today. That song was out nine months before Mo3 got on it, and it was at it had terrible views. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I did anything in my power to make sure that you know that song got a Mo3 album. So basically, it was like a win-win. It's a win-win for both. Situ it's a win-win for both situations. You know, uh, Mo3 fan base is huge. Mo3 fan base is the biggest fan base. Outside of Erica Badu and uh and uh, what's the other guy name? Post Malone. Post Malone that Dallas ever seen. That is the first hip hop artist, African American black artist that had the fan base that he had. So you know, uh, it was a win win situation for both of them. Hmm. You know and what I'm saying? But let me tell you this: I, I I feel deep in my heart, Bobby Bobby the only person that profited off Mo Three Deaths. Damn, why would you say that? Oh, cause he you got a song. It's went gold, your first song. You still cool with the other side that they hate Mo3. And you still doing shows. And you got signed. You got a deal to the same label that Rainwater took you to. You know what I'm saying? Out the sake of I'm thinking that you that you just Mo3, you know what I'm saying? You had too much love Mo3, you know what I'm saying? Damn. I ain't looked at it like that. So basically if Mo3 was still alive, you don't think his official version of Outside would have came out? No, nah, it wouldn't. Mo3 said, fuck that song. You people won't even be singing outside. I would have still pushed for it, but Bobby and his team had his mind made up when he was alive that we didn't need Mo3. That song was gonna do what it do regardless. You know what I'm saying? So, so I got the complete, I got the list I sent to you that Mo3 made for his album that was gonna come out. He wrote it himself, and outside was not on there. The city of Dallas felt some type of way that he did a song with Trap Boy. Um, you know, it, it ruffled a lot of people's feathers, but then, you know, on the flip side of that. He said it wasn't my beef, you know. I'm trying to put on for the city, which is, which is true. Yeah, I, 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 I see where he's coming from. So let me ask you a question: Is on he really standpoint? Is he really trying to put on for the city? Because let me tell you like this. Um, you know, they circled just with recent a, a murder, right? Yeah. So if you're trying to put on for the city, the dude that that. Got the dude that's involved in the murder of your homeboy, he's a rapper too. Well, you gonna do a song with him? That's putting on for the city because he that dude that murdered your pot. Why don't you go do a song with that dude and say, We doing this for the city of Dallas, man. Uh, you know, uh my my guy right here, they accused him of something, but we're not worried about that. We want the city to come together. You know what I'm saying? No, you want the city to come together for your own benefits. And the city not even together. Because put it like this, on our end. In Mo3 Circle, we always try to put this city together. From the photographers, the photog nobody's from North Dallas that Mo3 in Mo3 Circle. Mo3 is the only artist that signed two other art, two other rappers not from the same side of town, the same area. Uh, the first guy to, to make sure a photographer get paid by a label out here. The guy that made his beats signed to a label. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, comedians done profited off this whole situation. 
Trayvo promoters from all over them profit off the Mo3 situation. So Mo3 have always brought the city together. But you know, at the end of the day, you gotta watch other people's characters. Who have they put on? Nobody, because they for themselves. You know what I'm saying? So on our end, like DJs, we got multiple DJs from from other side of the uh, 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 town. One DJ, June Juni baby, that's over there with money bag, money bag. Yo, shout out Mo3 first DJ wasn't even a DJ, not from the same side of town as Mo3. Right. He grew up in Oak Cliff. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you know anybody barbers? You know Mo3 put on his barber. His, his barber that was cutting his hair at the time, you know, he was like, he, he he got famous as a barber. So, you know, at the end of the day, we always try to put the, the city together. But, you know, you know, sometimes people or, you know, people want the, you know, the fame for themselves. You said that when the Fort Worth situation happened, Mo 3's day ones fell like they fell back from him. They, they, uh, they uh, yeah, they, uh, they went to the other side, too. When the Fort Worth shit happened, everybody crossed Mo3 out. They thought Mo3 was going to jail for life. They thought that his whole rap career was over. They thought it was too dangerous to be around him. They was going to get killed or something was going to happen to them. Damn. Mo3 Mo went to jail. For three months, he stayed in the house because of them jail charges. Everybody felt like Mo3 fell off. Other artists that was against him started rising. We got the big, we got King Kong out the way. You know what I'm saying? The big gorilla was out the way. um, 2018. The big gorilla was out the way. Three set in his, in his house, set up his camera. I remember this day. And sung and I. I'm going to be a gangster to the day I die. Had the whole world back on. Mo3 was the first person in Dallas to have his own challenge. I mean, Texas. Texas was not doing no challenge. He had everybody in Texas doing, I mean, everybody around the world doing this challenge that came out of Dallas, Texas. It was a Mo3 and I challenge. That that didn't ever get, um, that didn't ever go gold because didn't it have something to do with Beyonce or some shit like that? We never registered. Why? I didn't know how. <laughs> That's real. <laughs> we, uh, we were selling CDs. So he didn't benefit off that. From strings, but off shows and shit. Oh, off shows. That first show we did and I, after two weeks, they sung every word. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, he he never did benefit off, off that song. Was that oh, oh and then, hold on, hold on. The guy that made the beat, after we got everything together, the paperwork, and we was trying to go to radio, got it cleared, the guy who made the track, who re resampled the track, the original track, from Dallas, Texas, charged more three. Fifteen thousand dollars for the for the beat, and Mo Three said, "Fuck that song," because it blew up. So he raised the price. He raised the price. That's that. That's that shit. All eyes been you, against him. That's why you gotta buy the beat before the song blows up, because you never know. It's like stocks. Yeah, yeah. That's that, and he's from Dallas. He from Dallas. So I wonder, have you spoke to him since? Uh, he yeah, he done. He contacted me trying to give tracks to. Uh, he was trying to get more tracks to three, and he was trying to get tracks to number seven and done Okay, so is it? It's not on streaming platforms yet. Oh, now it is. Okay, now it is. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Man, that, that's crazy. So, did Mo Three ever take back his day ones after that? No, because he. Uh, that's what he start. That's who he started rapping about. If you listen to two thousand eight songs, and on, um, from everybody your friend to uh, recent time, those are friends that he thought to go kill him. You know what I'm saying? Those, those, those are friends he rapped about. He rapped about every single last one of them. Okay. Now, Rainwater, before Mo3, like before Mo3, Rainwater, you were known, like in the city. Niggas, right. who knew, niggas knew who Rainwater was. But when niggas mentioned your name, it was never good. It was, it was he's a janky party promoter. Um, he steals money. He charges, he puts up fake shows and and a lot of people blame you for they they feel like you ruined the dance era because you fucked over a lot of artists. Let's let's really like talk about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I you can't name one artist I fucked over. Every artist from the dance era gonna say I made money with them. Now the people that was behind them that was actually doing the fucking didn't like me because they couldn't control their artists because it was a little it was a little person running around. Telling they artists 
the real situation was going on. You know, uh, and then, you know, so at the time, people didn't know my vision. You know, around the dance area, I was booking four or five artists at a time in one building. So, you know, I made Dallas a uh, Texas Relay. I ran Texas Relay for three or four years just off Dallas music because I I made them a whole unit. When we walked down, down 6th Street into Texas Relay, Dallas was a unit. And it was powerful. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, sometimes people back then, they thought it was janky, but, you know, they didn't understand exactly what I was doing. Now, you got a lot of booking agencies. You got a lot of booking agencies out of Dallas. You got a lot of people trying to be managers. You got a lot of people trying to do... You got, hell, you got you got DJs. You got radio personality. You got bloggers signing artists. I was on that... <laughs> I was on that five years ago. Hey, hey, hey you, don't, you don't got to shoot no slugs at no, me, not, not, just... not, not, not only to you, but you know, like, hell, you got people that shoot videos, cameramans trying to sign artists now. So yeah. back in the day, they thought I was fucking them over, getting a percentage out the artist's money. But now, you know, five, I mean, 10 years now, people are like, oh, what are you doing? Yeah. you. Know, it was one of them things where people would say you would, you would like take majority of the show money and give them pieces. No, no, How no. Who no. is that? No, no. What I was doing was everybody was in a group then. Everybody was in the group. So if I if if they if they and then hold up, everybody was in the group and and, and they wasn't making no damn money. So if they, I remember the hottest artists that you could be on BET back then and charge three thousand a group. So if you charge three thousand, right? And I take my thousand off top. If you charge three thousand, I charge them four thousand. Take my thousand off top. But it's four of y'all in a group. Got to split three thousand. I made more money than the whole group because they had to split their money and get their money to their manager and find a ride down there. Makes sense. So they feel like I took majority of the money because I made more money than them because ain't nobody tell y'all be no You're only one person. And nobody told y'all be in no group. Y'all wanted to be in the group. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So after I, let me say, after I went to jail through the dance era, it flopped. Nobody was getting shows no more. What did you go to jail for? I went to jail for uh, breaking the houses. Okay. And this yeah. is in Arlington or this was in Cedar Hill? Uh that was uh in Denton, Texas. Okay. At the college, you know what I'm saying? So uh, you know, Dallas had Dallas was going downhill, so I wasn't making the show money that I was making. So I was forced to throw my own shows. So I was breaking the houses, getting the funds to throw my own shows, you know what I'm saying? And you were still on like TVs and VCRs I, and shit at the time? I, I was going for I was just going for MacBook Pros. Damn, yeah, back then, I mean, they still hit now, but back then. It was $1,000, it was 500 to to $1,000 a laptop. So you go to jail, what do you think the Dallas scene did wrong while you were gone? Uh, they didn't stay consistent with the shows. It was nobody to book their shows, so it was nobody to promote their music. And then Club Cirque went down here. And so it, it was nobody to, you know, my, my method was Club Cirque, Bay Bay, then Rainwater come take you on the road and get you some money. So when I went to jail, Club Cirque was out the picture. It was nobody breaking the artists. And so when I got out, the only artist that was hot at the time was Lil Runny and Young Nation because I linked them together to do Throw That Ass in a Circle together. I was the reason why Young Nation was on that song before I went to jail. So when I got out of jail, Lil Young, uh, Young Nation and Lil Runny was the only hot, hottest people. I, I I was writing raps in, in, in jail. Trying, I said, it's my time to come out and be a rapper. Right? And so, a month after I get out of jail, I, made, I meet Mo3. You know what I'm saying? Within a month, I meet Mo3. So, I kept telling him, I listened to his rap and said, oh yeah, this is what they need. This is what Dallas need. You know, Dallas was too embarrassed to be in the, in the dance era. They thought it was corny. It was goofy. So You know, Mo3 mentioned that at the end of um his the box freestyle. Yeah. He said he made it cool for for it to be a gangster in Dallas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gangster music. Gangster music. Cause they went from it was from Young Nation, then the other boys were making straight dance, I mean that club music. And I let now three slowed it down. Do you know what I had to do to keep my lights on? He made it, he made it a sing along. Yeah. So, you know, he changed the whole culture. You know what I'm saying? Now the people that was making fast music start making slow music. You know? I mean, slow music, you know? Uh, had to get to that Guala, Guala, Guala. They came back from my Mo 3. The bitches and the hundred niggas, 
Yeah, that's Mo three. That's Mo. That's our Mo three. Uh, and he ain't lying, man. That ain't that's Mo three music. Nah, for real. Okay. Now, if you look around Dallas now, there's really no there's strip clubs, but the clubs they don't got the the DMX, the Jamies, the the club Cirques. You don't have the eighteen and up spot to break music how they used to. Shout out to Jay Hayes and, and and you know it's a lot of other promoters out here. Trayvon, but but there's no real eighteen and up to go to traditionally. You know every back then everybody waited to the weekend to go to these clubs. I'm talking about. I don't think it, I don't think it would be safe. That I mean, yeah, okay, hold on, let, let me get to that. Yeah, but there's no eighteen and ups now. There's no club circs. Um, there's nowhere to really break your music. And me and you talk about about it a lot. You said that the streets. Um, you know, internet rappers, street rappers. Do you feel like that what hurt Dallas is there's no eight, no true 18 and up club? Let me tell you what hurt Dallas. Yeah. Let me tell you what hurt Dallas. The 18 and up club and you. Oh shit. And why I say you wise, because there is no 18 year it's no 18 year up club to go ask the DJ to play your music. So any rapper in DFW right now go make a music and I got to get it on Say Cheese. They don't do no hustle. You don't see... Bro, when you came on the scene, you don't see no more posters. You don't see no more flyers. You don't see no more CDs. You don't see none of that because it's when I make a music, I got to go to Say Cheese. If I get on Say but Cheese... look, I'm, and you're 100% right. Right. I don't think you're... I'm not... I don't look at this as you coming at me. I look at it as, for example, when me and Mo3 did our campaigns and shit... He still was grinding in the street. He right. Didn't rely, he didn't rely on the say cheese post. And I feel like that's what a lot of people do. Um, he still went out of state. He's you you still, you, you, you yourself, you still pressed out flyers and spread them all over gas stations in Oak Cliff yeah. in North Dallas. Like I remember that. You're you're right. A lot of people do rely on say cheese, and you still need the street. Yeah, you do. If your shit ain't getting jammed in your local barbershop, then your shit ain't jammed. But but see, they'll put in their mind. See, see, people put in their mind that I gotta go, I gotta go to the internet, I gotta go to the internet. So, so so you know, I, I hear a lot of stuff about when when people go over there with you, a lot of artists, and you know, they, they go over there with you and then they be so excited, then they put everything on your shoulders. Yeah. And they sit in the house all day and just yeah. look at their phone and wait to and wait for you to post them. So when you exactly. stop posting them, it's like, what should I do? Man, Sean Cotton fucked me over. No, you fuck yeah. yourself over because you don't get outside this, get outside that house and grind for yourself. And now you you made it like that around the world. But it's not even Dallas no more. Like Washington, <laughs> you know, I, I met a dude in Florida and people come at me all the time and they not tired. I be tired of hearing they like, bro, can you can you can you put me down and say cheese? And I tell people all the time, you do not want to call and pay say cheese. Just go viral. Do keep going and viral. Me, let, and let me find them. If you find them, then you got a better, they got a better chance of getting signed and they got a better chance of getting, getting posted for free. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But the you facts. know, they, they, don't, they don't know, you know what I'm saying? Some people just. The, the internet ruined it because yeah. early 2000s, it was still half and half. Right. Now it's, it's kind of 80 20. Right. Yeah. Damn. Nah, that's that's real. Um, you said this a while back, and it, and it and it and it made me think. You said that Arlington was more dangerous than Dallas. Yeah, it was. It Ar was. Be it, it, um, no, I think it still is. It still is. Yeah, because uh, you right in the middle of Dallas and Fort Worth. You right in good. You right in the middle of poverty and and being successful. And you're five minutes away from Dalworth. Yeah, you you five minutes away from Dalworth, and so um. You know, you got a mixture. It's like a tornado. You got hot and cold, and they make this big ass storm that come and swipe. So, uh, I believe that uh, Arlington is the most dangerous city in uh, in uh, in in Dallas and Fort Worth. You know, w Dallas and Fort Worth are gonna watch this interview, and this is gonna go viral, and they're gonna laugh at you. I bet they will. But then, if you just take the statistics, Arlington got more murders than any city. In Dallas and Fort Worth, I had watched a bunch of good kids in Arlington go to jail for murder. I had watched a bunch of bad kids go to jail for, for murder. I had watched a guy, I have watched people go to jail for murder in Arlington that ain't realized what he had going on. Because to be real, to, to be honest, real with you, 
Outside of Mo3, hold up. Outside of Mo3, the only gangster rapper that came out of DFW, real gangster, not no look, just doing anything for clout, was Tay K. Mm. And he, he was right there in the mix of North Arlington. You know what I'm saying? All the other boys that were sitting there doing that, ain't nobody was sitting there doing shit like Mo. I mean, take, before Mo three, people before Mo, people start realizing what Mo three had going on. It was Tay K from Arlington. You know what I'm saying? And so and so if so, you got to think about this. And Tay K was not even trying to go viral. He was just telling his livelihood what was going on and his the race. He was actually doing the race. You know what I'm saying? Like, so he was just talking about what was going on. And so you gotta think about Arlington. Arlington got a million of those. Arlington got a million of people that sit there and move from this state to we finna go give you a better life. Okay, they see yeah. all them roller coasters. Okay, it look good. Yeah. It look good, but you got a mixture of people on uh on 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 uh on welfare, you got people that more people that's rich. You got people that you know what I'm saying. So you might go to school yeah. with a person in Arlington, and you have nothing. Your mom on Section Eight, so yeah, they had to place her in Arlington. Now yeah. you got this I, guy over here. He driving. He driving a nice car, but that guy who ain't got nothing. Who mom on Section Eight? Oh, I gotta do something about that. I want what he got because people laughing at me. And he go crash yeah. out. Then you got you the know, rich kids that people calling them soft. So now they gotta Arlington. prove themselves. Yeah, Arlington a so, dangerous place to live. But, but see, look, I grew up in East Arlington and. The reason why Arlington is so dangerous is because, like you said, you have a lot of people from Louisiana that live yeah. in Arlington. A lot of people from Arkansas. And like you said, Fort Worth, Dallas. Dow Worth is five minutes Oklahoma. down the street. Yeah. Oklahoma. So it's a it's a melting pot and it creates friction. Like you said, it creates friction because it's it's a hundred different cultures mixed together. Right. Right. You know, in, in Dallas and Fort Worth, it's kind of one, two cultures and it's it's the traditional thing. Arlington is it is like you said, it's 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 crazy. In Dallas or Fort Worth, in the hood in the hoods, you know, you got somebody to preach to you saying, you know, your my my little my my big brother got murdered or my daddy in jail for murder. In Arlington, it's it's not always like that. Nobody can preach to them and saying, Y'all need to stay on a narrow road. The penitentiary do. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And so, you know, you know, Arlington, Arlington, uh yeah, that's, that's, I think that was the most that's the most dangerous spot I ever lived in in uh in Dallas. And I done lived in Oak Cliff, I done lived in City Hill, I lived in North Dallas, I done lived in pretty much everywhere. I lived in Fort Worth. But And you and you went to Seguin. I went to Seguin. Okay, and for six you months. witnessed and you witnessed shootings? Man, when I went to Seguin The Arlington it, Fights, Agtown Fights. It was era. a tradition of people leaving school. My first day at Seguin. You wear you wear anything you want to wear. It's no uniform. The whole the whole DFW is wearing uniform except Arlington School District. Definitely. And you got off campus lunch. So it was a tradition is when we leave school, we all finna meet up and fight on this camera. And you might get jumped, you might get your head busted, you might do this, but we all go leave and get and, and, and watch somebody get beat the shit out of and put it out <laughs> and and they were using it as money. They was putting it out as DVDs. Mike Jack. Mike Jack, yeah. And so Dallas wasn't nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? Dallas Dallas was worried about getting killed because they don't hurt about people getting killed. Arlington, they had no fear. They didn't give a damn. You kill somebody shit, then he just went he went to go do life. Oh, damn. You know what I'm saying? They didn't have no, they didn't understand. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like they didn't they didn't understand. Yeah. And in Dallas, when niggas left school, I mean, they was meeting up to fight too, right? Yeah, but not like Arlington. It was an everyday, it was like a, it was like a mixtape. You know how kids nowadays get out and, and go to the studio? They was getting out to fight to sell it. They was really, that's why I learned some of my business techniques at. So really, <laughs> Mike Jack is really the jankiest nigga that ever came out of DFW because he was, he was getting, he wasn't even fighting. He was watching y'all clowns fight each other and making money off of it. Basically what the bloggers do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, man. Shout out Mike Jack and Diacobote too. Yeah, Diacobote, D, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, Arlington, uh, Arlington was a whole nother beast. Did you get in any fights out there or you kind of was just like the kid? Yeah, 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 I got, that's why I, I lasted four months and, and went back to City Hill. <laughs> yeah, Arlington, Arlington, I got jumped so, I got jumped so bad, Arlington, man, my, man, my whole house fucked up, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, 
Yeah, what did yeah. you What did you do in Arlington to get jumped? Uh, I I took up I took up for the uh the not so cool kids. See, when I got to Arlington, everybody wanted to claim they were from Dallas. Everybody was claiming Oak Cliff back then. Oak Cliff, and but see, I was raised <laughs> on that side of town, so I know you ain't from Oak Cliff. I know you ain't from Oak Cliff. I know you ain't. I ain't never seen y'all no Carter the Kimmel game, so I went against them for the people that was actually from Arlington because because me coming from from another school district, it's like. These guys are really cool over here, but then you got these guys that wanted to be the from the hood so bad. So I went from the guys who wasn't really, you know, wasn't trying to be for no Dallas, no Oak Cliff, no Fort Worth. They were just being themselves. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, yeah, tag team and uh, what was the rest of that click out? The Pack P A C. Yeah, yeah, F, South, uh, yeah. yeah, South Arlington kids. Yeah, South Arlington. You know, uh, F Y C B H D R M. Yeah. Uh, Lynch Mob. Lynch Mob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I was, I was more cool with them. I can't speak on them East Arlington and uh yeah that's the Arlington from them. the apartments because the Arlington from from North Arlington they weren't trying to be like they were from Dallas because they was really coming from apartments definitely yeah you know what I'm saying so you know uh you know so shit yeah. I got my name from Venice Beach the, the <laughs> okay yeah. you a, you a, you yeah. a Arlington veteran yeah I got my name from Venice Beach <laughs> yeah. It's way more suburbs in in the DFW than Arlington. You got Richardson, you got Garland. Um, you got Mesquite, Lancaster. Why is Arlington the most hated? Because they in between Dallas and Fort Worth. You might come from Dallas. You on 20, right? Headed to Arlington. You passing all these hood stores. You got you know what I'm saying? You from 35, you got past Big T, you passing all these hood stores. You go to Duncanville, Duncanville look okay. Then you go across that mountain and past that lake. And now it looks beautiful out here. And you keep driving through there, then you right back in the hood after you pass it. So it's in between. You know, people, you know, people uh downgraded. Like, you know what I'm saying? People look over all of them. You know, you know, people looked over all of the rappers. You know what I'm saying? And then as, as you as you as you came out and uh they started kind of listening to all of the rappers, but they still kind of they look down on it. They don't. It's like they don't believe in it. But I mean, after the, even after Tay K, they don't believe in. It. They still hold their nuts on Arlington. What's What's the most dangerous area in in Dallas? Uh, North Dallas. Okay. Because they come and from apartments. It's a million people. It's a million people in one area from all yeah. over the world. Square mileage, and, and it's so and, small, and, so yeah, tiny. And, uh, and, and they and, and you know. You know, they, they, they come from apartments. It's a different from houses. And I, you know, I lived in both. It's a different from houses and apartments. Apartment, you can be staying next door to a, a mass killer. The other, the other, that on this side, you might be a pimp. On this side, down below you, a mama might be gone all day long, got two kids. Upstairs, a guy probably beating the shit out of his wife. You know, you got so much, you got so many in the parking lot. You got to worry about getting robbed in the parking lot. You might, somebody in the, somebody, when you park in your car, the next person in the building over can't pay their rent, but you, but you flossing. So when you go inside, they might break into your car. You know what I'm saying? It's not no, it's, it, when you come from them apartments, it's not no age to it. An 18 year old might see what a 13 year old got and take, and take what he got. So, you know, it's like, you know what I'm saying? So, the, the, uh, I, I give a lot of respect from people all over the world that come from apartments. Mm. You know, statistically, North Dallas, they say it is the most dangerous. But I think around Dallas, if you was to ask anybody from Dallas, they would say Pleasant Grove. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah Pleasant Grove. Uh, but no, but like, yeah, but a lot of them people from Pleasant Grove, if you're from Dallas, Texas, when you graduate, 18, 19 year old, 20 year olds, most of them moved to North Dallas to get their own apartment. Even Pleasant Grove people, they moved to North Dallas. So, you know, I don't know, but don't get it twisted though. I met a lot of people from the Grove that square business, but you know, it's just that area in North Dallas, like, you know, you don't know who you're gonna run into. It's a jungle. That's why I like Mo3 a lot, you know what I'm saying? He like, you know, he, uh, you, raised in, you raised in that area, you know, uh, you got to stand up for yourself. You know, you can't you can't rely on no clicks out there. You know what I'm saying? The thing that was so impressive about Mo3 to me is I remember we did the Dallas versus everything. Dallas versus everybody. And um, 
So many people were mad because they were hold saying. Hold on, hold on. When he walked in that studio, what happened? <laughs> you can't put me. Yo, people are already saying I'm messy. We can't but do you this. But no, 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 no. You're not messy. <laughs> but, but, but like I'm saying, you walked in the studio... As I, as, as I, as like, I like I said from the get it, the whole city of Dallas that was on at that time didn't want to let him in the game. Right or wrong? Yeah. They didn't want him no. on the song. Why? So so what you going to say? They, they thought what? It, it was, well, oh, you want me to talk about that night? No, I'm talking about when, when he, after he got on the song. Okay. It, it, the most impressive thing about Mo 3 was they didn't want him on that song because it was this McKinney thing. They would put the McKinney thing over him. You know what I'm saying? And I see that when people are from the suburbs in the DFW area, it's hard to get over that. It's hard to get over that, that obstacle. You got to prove you're tough or you got to prove something. They did it to DeRoe. They did it to a lot of other people saying, oh, DeRoe's but it's from only, It's only when you got talent. But, 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 look, but look, though, it took him a while to get over that McKinney thing, and he did it. Yeah, he never spoke about it. He was embarrassed about it, too, at first, when I first met him. So, so are you... It, it's confirmed. Did he grow up in McKinney or did no, he grow up in Dallas? Mo three moved up. Mo three moved to North Dallas when he was eleven or twelve. Okay. So it's just like me, for instance, right? Uh, I know a lot of I when I I grad, I mean I went to school in Oak Cliff, kindergarten, first grade, Oak Cliff, second grade, third grade. I moved to Cedar Hill. But if you ask the average person, Rainwater's from Cedar Hill. Mm hmm. But no, this boy over here really doing something. He ain't he ain't from North Dallas. He from McKinney. So you know they take the most negative things to say the most about negative a person shit and twist it on you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you know. Yeah. Um, video just came out about two months ago of Mo Three getting out the car because at first people were trying to say he didn't have a gun. He was lacking. Um, then a new. New audio came out from the 18 wheeler behind him showing that getting he was getting out the car to get to the stash spot because he couldn't get to the stash spot from right. the driver's seat, right? Right. And he panicked. Do you feel like he panicked and that's why he couldn't really get to his gun? Uh, I, don't, yeah, I, don't, I don't think he knew how much time he had. Yeah, I don't think he knew how much time he had. You know, uh, if you go back to my first interview when I was on the phone with him, he said, damn, Rain, these niggas shooting. And he stopped for a minute. And that's why I heard the door open, you know what I'm saying? And I guess he put the phone in his pocket because when you see the video of him laying down, the phone laying right next to him. So I believe he said, he stopped for a minute and heard gunshots. Then he said, damn, Rain, they is shooting. So when he got out the car, I don't think three realized they was actually shooting. He knew he knew something wasn't right, but I don't think he actually knew what was really going on. You know what I'm saying? Until it, them shots started hitting that car. So I, I feel like he just didn't never have he he didn't know how, to, how much time he had. You know what I'm saying? Uh a person can't speak on that if they never been in that situation. Definitely. You know, uh I've been in that situation before, so you know, I, I got shot in the car. Uh, I would have put that bitch in drive and try to ram that motherfucker car as, as many times as I could. You know what I'm saying? But you know, uh, three mind frame is okay. Something wrong. Okay, let's go to war. If three could have got to that gun, he would have. He would. He would have went to war right there in the middle of that highway. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, as I always told him though. And the new age rap game, I feel like uh, real niggas don't make it. If you're a real nigga in the rap game and doing real street shit, you don't make it. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't make it far. You know what I'm saying? I believe, I believe Mo Three, Von, uh, Take K, Young Boy. You know, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to forget no names. Fredo, you know, uh. I believe all of them are real street niggas. Push you know what I'm saying? Pooh Shiesty. See, he just got locked up. Casanova. You know what I'm saying? All of them LA niggas. Uh, what's the 400 dude? He, uh, uh, Treetop. Didn't he get shot a lot? 
Who? I got one, uh, 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 I forgot the dude from LA. Uh, it's a lot of niggas in jail right now. Lucci. Yeah, Lucci. Um, we can keep we can keep going. Yeah, yeah. So I I honestly feel like uh, if you're a street a real street nigga in a, uh in that in uh in the rap game, you're not gonna make it. It's the guys that's not street niggas that's making it for. You know what I'm saying? You 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 never confirmed where he got shot at. Yeah. You, you later told me he was shot in the chest. Yeah. Okay, that's that's true. Yeah. Okay. I, I did an interview with this girl named Kosha, and um, it went viral. She claims that uh, Mo three came to her before, and Mo three's angry still. Um, he haven't crossed over yet. Um, he wants revenge. This is the same thing that another uh, psychic said as well on a different time period that he didn't cross over. He was angry. Um, you know, when you seen that, what did you think? Um, um, I thought it was some bullshit after I kept watching. Okay. Because uh, y'all going out Mo3 music and y'all feel like Mo3 this big angry rapper and this angry individual. But the people that really knew Mo3 knew the things he say. And I wonder, I, I always want to say, so you, so you mean to tell me my partner came back and talked to you and they say nobody's kids? He ain't say mm. nothing about the situation that another guy over here holding his music. You know what I'm saying? Niggas fighting over rights to this and that, this and that. But you you talk about revenge? That's all you talk about? Nah. But if, if Mo3 had a chance to talk to somebody to make everything more right about a different situation, nah, I don't, I don't believe that uh, he would have just, just came to y'all to talk about no revenge. You know what okay. I'm saying? Cause because if, if if that was the case, man, we need you to go talk to a lot of people to to get some answers around the world. You only talking about rappers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> that's some bullshit. Like, you know what I'm saying? You only talk you only talking about rappers. We need to talk about the dude who, who y'all thought found we need to ask her, go go talk to the dude who y'all thought found found the cure of AIDS. Remember he died, right? Yeah, Dr. We, Sabi. We need to go talk to him and find out. To stuff that we really need to know that the world he wasn't able to make the documentaries for us to know. We don't need to talk, you know what I'm saying? So she just so I, I believe that uh it was a good way for her to get uh notice. Would you do a reading? No, nah, because Mo three did one screening and that's how I know he wouldn't talk to them people because after he did the screen uh the screening with the lady that's keep coming doing the interviews, he told me he'll never do it again because he gave him nightmares. Damn. And he said the same thing too. He said, Ryan, I talked to Ro Lee. I said, What Ro Lee say? He said, Ro Lee said, keep doing your thing, nigga. I said, okay. I said, so Ro Lee didn't say nobody's kids? He said, he said, nah. He said, I talked to my granny too. My granny said she was watching over me. I said, okay. Then a week later, he said, man, he said, I ain't doing that shit no more. He said, I said, why? He said, some people saying that you talking to evil. And he said, Ryan, I I had nightmares after I did that. So, uh, I believe that really opened the gate. You believe that opened the gate to shit going downhill? Because uh, he talked to that lady at the girl's house. That's how he introduced to the queen lady. Then he died. And then, uh, matter of fact, yeah, he died. And then the first people that you heard speak about his death was the lady and the girls. So I'm not saying they I I'm not saying they they had nothing to do with it or anything like that. I'm not doing no detective work, but I feel like that opened up the gate to the evil. I believe in God. The God told us in the Bible that don't do it. And that's why my granny told me, and then my mama told me, and that's what I gotta believe. I remember when I was in Houston, the last time I've I seen Mo3 was a week after he did the video with Kevin Gates. And I think it did what eight or twelve million views yeah. first week. Yeah. And he seen me, and um, he wasn't satisfied. Uh. -uh. 
he was like, Sean, I got to be bigger. Like, I, I need to be bigger. Why isn't my Spotify playlisting where these guys are at? Why don't I have a million monthly listeners? This was when he had 300,000 monthly listeners. Right. And it, it when I left TD Jewelers, that's where we was at. Yeah. That shit motivated me. And I talked about him on my way home because to see an artist do 12 million in one week and still be motivated. He called Gazi on the phone like, yo, we need to get playlisting. Yeah. What are we doing? That shit made me look at Mo3 and was like, yo, he's prepared for greatness. Yeah, he was never enough. Yeah, uh, it was never enough. I argued with him a lot. I, I never I never wanted him to get comfortable. You know, uh, Mo3 got comfortable in 2000. When he was on top, he got comfortable. What was that, 19? Yeah. When he made four indictments, man, that was a... Uh, uh, I ain't, I ain't like that. I ain't like that that version of Mo three, cause he was comfortable. He was freestyling. He wasn't telling no more stories. He was happy. He was buying out this and buying that, and uh, he was comfortable. He wasn't hungry no more. But when his stuff happened in Fort Worth, it turned him back into the hungry Mo three. Yeah. Um. About a month ago, a guy came out in an interview in Houston and said Mo3 killed somebody at a nightclub. It went viral. Everybody reposted it. Um, all the major platforms uh, picked it up. When you seen that, what was your take on it? Because that was news that that it was it was new news. Like nobody reported on that until shit last month. Was that was that was he clout chasing or when the guy? Uh yeah yeah that was yeah that was goofy. But it was it, it was a uh it was a shooting and in they, Houston. Yeah, they, they try to take his life. They try they try to take his life. Okay, so Mo three talked about this shit in his re in his music. <laughs> the Houston situation, not the Dallas shit. Yeah, he, he uh Mo three Mo three trying to let everybody know what was going. I mean, you know. Mo3 couldn't go to the studio without rapping what's going on in his life. If if he just got through fucking a hoe, then he go go, that's what he rap about. You know what I'm saying? So you see that interview, it goes viral. Do you contact this guy? What's going through Rainwater's head? I ain't even speak to him. You don't know this guy? Uh-uh, never met him in my life. Okay. Now. A lot of people like to say that Mo3 was going to blow regardless. Rainwater, it don't matter. You can get a blind man to, to manage Mo3 and he would have blew up. Yeah, Who yeah. Lost? Yeah, why they, why they, Mo3 was with two, hold up. When I met Mo3, Mo3 was with two millionaires. He, he had been through two millionaires when I met him. Like straight up. And so, you know, uh, I don't believe nobody else had the patience that I had. So, you know, you got two millionaires, multi-millionaires that's managing you and that's you signed to their label that's, and then you trust the brokers one. You know what I'm saying? I, so I, I, I naturally don't believe that, you know, people had the patience to deal with him because at the end of the day, when I met Mo3, you, as you know, he was a live wire. You, they, they wasn't finna put up what I had to put up with. Not, not nobody in the city of Dallas. Cause you gotta understand this. It was five other managers that came along with us, and all of them said, "Oh yeah, nah, I can't, I can't deal with him." All of them. You know, it was, Damn. it was five other people that, you know, was in a, was in a mix of, you know, uh, 2019. I thought 2019, it was an individual that had a top 10 artist in the world trying to get involved with Mo3. You know, uh, when all of them try to get involved with Mo3 and try to do contracts, that's where they fuck themselves. Because he ain't finna do no contract with you. And after he say, man, this boy Rainwater over here ain't did no contract with me. And I ain't asked for this, asked for that. And and he done, he done helped me and gave me my last. But you just come around and try to take 20% of what I got and, and you don't pay for nothing else? Yeah, nah. Yeah. 
It's always an excuse, you know. Um, when when rappers blow, people always like to say they was going to blow regardless. It's yeah, nah. People never see the work done behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, nah, nah, nah. They uh, you know, even on your situation, uh, are oh, we saying names? Yeah, we can say names. Uh, Splurge, Baby Young. I mean, Baby, yeah, Baby Young and uh, Tay K. Uh, uh, they only blue because of your channel, and I and I might forgot some names, but you know, uh, even around the world, I, I watched another artist. I watched another artist from Florida that came and said that they uh, they didn't need you. You didn't do shit for them. But I, uh, down here in Texas, we only knew you because you don't say cheese. So. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of artists. I, I watch you. I watch you post the artists and stop posting the artists, and and you know they they career go tremendously downhill. So you know, uh, people people only say even even they say that in the greatness they say Jordan wasn't gonna make it because of Pippen, and Pippen was wasn't gonna make it because of Jordan. Well, we can't do nothing about that. That's how God made it work. So that's how God made it work. So you know, you know. So when people be like, uh. Mo three was gonna make it regardless. Uh, then 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 y'all should have then y'all should have helped them blow up regardless. You know what I'm saying? But you know, uh, a lot of people couldn't. Uh, they they couldn't. Uh, they ain't had the patience for three. It was a lot of patience for three. You had an artist that woke up every morning and he going viral. You know what I'm saying? Or or or, or he getting in tour with this person. Then the person he getting in tour with now you in tour with them. And you know, there's a lot of opportunities in my life that I could have said, man, I ain't dealing with Mo three. Right. It's a lot of opportunities. Like he could say, "Man, I ain't fucking with Rainwater." He and y'all gotta understand, Mo Three is strong minded. He is easy to cut somebody off. So, you know, all the bad shit he heard about me, and he still came around. Or he still called me. He still answered the phone. What I what I call for 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 six years straight. Six years straight. Me and Mo Three talked every day. Every day he woke up, every day he went to sleep. You know what I'm saying? Where, where, where nobody in the industry was messing with him. You know what I'm saying? When big shows came about, they didn't put him on them shows. Go go find a fly right now where the big artists came and, and Mo3 opened up for him. Except for shows I threw. I threw the uh, wife and Lucha and Mo3 together in 2018 at Onyx and Boosie. And to keep it real with you, Boosie is the realest artist in the game right now. He ain't he's the realest artist in the game right now. And and uh and uh and I don't think people give him the respect that he get. Well for somebody who Instagram keep getting deleted, somebody who had counsel, somebody who been in jail as long as he's been, he is the realest artist that we ever met. Boosie flew Mo3 out there and, and, and everything Boosie ever did, Boosie never asked for paperwork and asked then asked for a dollar. You know what I'm saying? I always wondered how that worked, you know, because Mo3 and Yella Beezy wasn't seeing eye to eye, but Boosie, you know, he did music with Yella, he did music with Mo3, and like, how did that, how did both artists take that? Uh, Because it's kind of like he's the OG in the middle, but then it's like, you cool with everybody, but then you, some people say you got to choose sides, and some people saying uh, don't choose sides, be cool with everybody. How does that shit work? Yeah, Boosie and Mo3 never discussed uh, what was going on. Mo3 never took his problem to Boosie. We never sat there and, and had a discussion what was going on. Mo3 never mentioned Yellow Beezy's name in a song. So, so Boosie never, Mo3 and Boosie never discussed those, like, those type of what was going on? Like, like, nah, nah, Boosie, 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 Boosie didn't know how deep, he, he, they ain't never discussed it. Okay. Uh, one thing we know about Mo3, he was frugal. I don't like to say cheap. He was frugal. He didn't like spending his money. It's, yeah, that motherfucker, they're cheap. <laughs> you came out, and people felt some type of way that you said it, but he used to buy fake designer. He but, said it, though. He said it. He he did say it. Yeah, he said it. Like in his new song that I'm finna release, Mo3 said, I'ma keep buying, I'm gonna keep buying, I'm gonna keep buying from these boosters. You know, uh 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 he say in one song, uh one song, uh I'm too cheap for a bodyguard, my pride too big. Yep. You you know, I, all I did was repeat it 
everything Mo3 said in them interviews and everything that really happened. But the outside people that wasn't Mo3 fans, they thought I was talking about him. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, Mo3 got on there one day after the situation that uh, I had and said, Rainwater scary. Everybody know me. I am scary. I'm not getting Mo I'm not getting in the car with no damn Mo3 with no damn uh guns. You know, you know what I'm saying? Or 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 whatever the three got going on, hell no, nah, I'm not riding in the car with you. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, in, in with Mo3 lifestyle, oh yeah, it made me scary. You know, I grew it was real. Yeah, it was real. I I grew up in a time frame where you 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 might jump somebody and go home, talk about it. You know, I grew up in a time in a time where it was 30 niggas and one and you'd be lucky one nigga had a deuce deuce. Now time frame how Mo3 made it in Dallas, Mo3 made the gangster shit come out of Dallas. Because when I when I met Mo3, they was they was dancing and they was look and they was and they was having a good time. When Mo3 started talking about that gangster shit, he made everybody in Dallas go get choppers and Dracos. And, 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 and now you see 30, you see 30 a uh, team of 30 dudes, and all of them might got pistols. You might see 16 year olds, and all of them got pistols. So well, my Mo3 lifestyle was different than my lifestyle. I was scared, I was scared of his lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, Charleston White. Yeah. Uh, my, I, I, that was a guy I found on the internet. He does a lot for his community. Great guy. Um, he has a strong opinion. He mentions Mo3 a lot. He loves Mo3. I don't know if you've seen our shit, but he loves Mo3. Right. Uh, um, what, what's your thoughts on Charleston White? Oh, I like, I, I like Charleston White. And that's your guy. Yeah. You, you no, no, no. Him. Yeah, I ain't with him. But 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 th but this is why I like Charles and White. Charles and White speaks the truth. People get mad at, at Charles and White, but I like Charles and White because Charles, Charles and White speaks the tr truth. He has said some things about Mo three that people didn't understand why I still be cool with him. But he speaks. I I haven't seen no negative stuff about what he's what he say. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know a, a lot of the things he say. He's controversial and he's blunt. He don't apologize for shit. So a lot of people take it to heart. Cause the way he says it, yeah, yeah. If he told, if he told me Ryan, Ryan Water motherfucking ass stutter too much and he ain't professional, then I can't get mad at him. I just got to make myself better, you know what I'm saying? And what I do, so yeah, I I, I like Charles and White. You can't, t I can't name one time did I sit there and look at Charles and White and say that was some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? You know what, what What did he say about Mo through that rub your people the wrong way? Um, uh, he said Mo three was dishing out the situation, the stuff, and you know, uh, and uh. You know, Mo he three predicted his own death. Huh? He predicted his own death. He predicted his own death. But then, and you know, people didn't understand why he said that. But then, the last album, the last twenty songs Mo three recorded, is talking about his death. You know, so I, I so you know, sometimes uh, with Charleston White, Charleston White, I like Charleston White. Char and look, look, Charleston White, is a, Charleston White is a, a gangster. Charleston White go everywhere by itself. I know that Ooh. I know that cause we go out. Yeah, he told me. We go out and Charleston White everywhere by itself. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 like he 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 say what he wanna say and Charleston White fly on the airplane by itself. He do everything by himself and Charleston White is ready for war. If you if you yeah. if you are ready if you if 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 you if you see Charleston White, just know that that motherfucker is ready for war. You know what I'm saying? Yes, like straight up, like like straight that up. That nigga got his taser. He, he got his pistol. He got, that nigga got man. I'm sitting in the strip club one night. Charles White walked up to me with a with, with a pocket knife and some mace and said and said, "You spray this, and and when they go for their eyes, you get to poking everybody." <laughs> and so so the, so the girl I'm with looking at me like, "Nigga, what y'all got going on?" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so yeah, I I, I like Charles White. Charles White is a real nigga. Now you pissed people off because you signed. I mean, well, you've been signed Don Don number seven. Then you signed Pink Pressure, right? And you say Pink Pressure's the next Mo three. Yeah. People, what are you doing, Rain? Why? Why would you uh, do that? Uh, right now. Uh, why, why would you put her under so much pressure? Cause she pressure. Her name Pink Pressure. <laughs> yeah, I like Pink. You know, you know. Let me tell you like this. You know what I do is, I don't. All these rappers that be in my inbox and they got they already own, they got this amount of money. I don't like them. I like a rapper who don't have nothing. 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 Scratch. That that come from diversity. 
I got a rapper right now that that that's, that's considered right now top five in the rap game, and haven't did one show in Dallas in two years, three years, at a regular club. Not no team part. He never ever been and did a show in the regular club, and and nobody ever seen him. I got another rapper who whole crew went to prison. Stretch game number seven. Yeah, they left him out here by himself. So so you know I I like to get the rappers who. Who, who who go against our eyes? But you're putting you're putting her up against uh, the expectations have to be extremely high. I remember when um, Jay Z said um, Memphis Bleak was 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 the next big thing, and it didn't happen like that. Oh yeah, like yeah, don't come around. You, you, if, if you ain't ready for the expectation to be high, you ain't re ready to be number one. You, you don't need to be around me. Cool. So is that still your artist? Because I heard y'all fell out. Nah, 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 nah. Uh, Pink, Pink is currently pregnant. Okay, so that's your artist. Yeah, yeah. Pink uh, currently pregnant. Pink on the contract. So you know we got a contract together. So you know. Okay. We still do bit. We still do business. You know. Number seven and Dun Dun are finna be the one and two artists in the state of Texas, in in, in uh in the next six six months to a year. You know what I'm saying? Right now, I, I give credit to what it's due. Um, Tay Money run Dallas right now. Thank you. That is the Thank you. that is the Thank king you. of Tay Money is the king of Dallas. Tay Money the only person doing their own shows, and they uh and and uh, and uh, she she doing she got her own fan base. She ain't doing no features with nobody. She did a feature. I mean, I see her with Big Tuck, and she ain't trying to get no clout off Big Tuck. She ain't going at no girl. She ain't doing no goofy shit. So I I I, I crown Tay Money the king of Dallas right now. Until my artists start dropping. You know what I'm saying? And after they start dropping, I'm sorry to take money. But uh Dun Dun first show, then put it like this, Dun Dun first show in Dallas, Texas, he will pack out the House of Blues. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Just straight just just, just, just straight up, you know what I'm saying? Dun Dun go uh pack out the House of Blues. Number seven gonna be the biggest street image, the street artist that Dallas done seen outside of Mo3. You know, know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna make a bridge right now that uh uh, outside of streaming money, outside I can't I can't say what everybody do about the media. Uh, you gotta come and and that'll tell you I come around me, uh, around here to get some real money. Okay, this may be controversial because I know you're gonna keep it all the way real. What? But what rap scene right now was better, Houston or Dallas? Right now? Right now? Uh, no. Can, can we do it like? Uh. Uh, Houston ain't got ain't got nobody but Fast Lane and B King, so Houston is better than Dallas right now. Okay, so you're saying Fast Lane and B King outweighs what Dallas has going on right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Fast Lane packing out shows, Fast Lane packing out shows, and uh, and uh, and they sing at least five songs word for word. Nobody in Dallas can uh, uh, since Mo Three passed. Nobody in Dallas can get can they go sing five, at least five words a song. Fast Lane got five five songs that I know for a fact. It's more in Houston. Outside of Houston, Fast Lane can rap. They go rap five songs word for word. B King got 10, 12 years of songs that generations uh can sing. B King right now, outside of the 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 the, the platinum artists, the Travis Scott, the Megan Thee Stallions, B King run Texas right now. B King is the most consistent artist in the last 12 years in the state of Texas. When B King started with that crush song, I know girls that was in college that there are judges right now. There are lawyers right now. You know what I'm saying? So B King, B King is the most consistent artist in the last 12 years in the state of Texas. He outweigh B, B King outweigh zero. B King outweigh Slim Thug. He outweigh the role. He outweigh uh Tum Tum, Big Tuck. I, I, I ain't no ain't been no other rapper like B King that came through this motherfucker. I agree with that. Um, Houston also has Mona Leo, um, Megan Thee Stallion, Don Tolliver. Right. Um, Dallas has hitters too. The DFW has hitters too. Cash Page, Post Malone. Right. I always say it's easier to get on in Dallas than Houston, but when you're in Houston, it means more. No, Houston got. Most artists from Houston got uh, niggas behind them dope boys with money. Mm. A lot of them. Houston has Lil Jeremy too. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand that Lil Jeremy would. Okay, okay, but look, let me go back. I always say 
when you get on in Houston, it means more because it's because it's harder to get a fan base in Houston. Nah, hell nah, it ain't harder, nigga. The island niggas, I, 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 most of the island niggas that came that, that that came out got got big boys behind them. Straight up. No, 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 no. no. I'm not talking about. So, the so, money so, so, so why you, why you say it's harder to get on in Houston? I think it's easier. It's, 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 it's easier to get on in Dallas because of the blog. No, you got all the no, 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 no. It's easier to get on in Houston because of the colleges. That's arguable because Houston gets 10,000 fresh faces a year. A year. No, no. If, no, you got TSU. You got Rice. You got... Uh, I think... Not, bro, look. If Dallas had PV, TSU... Dallas would be on. Day, yeah. Dallas would be more lit because yeah. we have more media. Right, right. I feel like in Houston, when you're on, it means something because it's harder. Because you got to do more street grind. And you got to have street cred out there. I think... I don't know. I feel like in Houston, it's more about your background. No, uh, no, because um, the the PB Pac Man dude, uh, uh, you know, he didn't blow up in Houston though. He blew up on Say Cheese. Yeah, yes, yeah. So um, I believe Houston mo Houston is more harder if you don't have no money. Mm, okay, you know what I'm saying. So you're saying that nobody in Dallas besides Tay Money can do five shows. I mean, five songs on the show. Uh no, I say nobody in Dallas can 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 bring in a crowd like she can. I don't. I, I never seen her show. They sing word for word. I know three of them. They go sing word for word. But I believe Tay Money, only person outside of what Mo Three did right now at the Pacific time, the only person that can throw her own shows. You know what I'm saying? And so, and that's what them other boys are gonna be mad about. So don't be surprised if people start hating on Tay Money and and, and 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 take her out. The radio should be playing that girl. That girl should be on every. She should have been on uh uh. What's the shit? Score more uh though. Uh, you talking about uh Jumbalaya? Jump, Tay Money should be on Jumbalaya. Tay Money should be on Outlet. But you know, at the end of the day, uh. I think Dallas, Dallas, and the people that's in charge, the gatekeepers in charge, they all got their own artists right now. So it's, if it's not their artists, then they ain't trying to, you know what I'm saying? But, I, but I'm here to say it right now. I'm not no hater. So look, if me, you, and three other gatekeepers got behind an artist, they'll be out of here. Oh, they'll be stupid. Let's do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I want to. They, 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 they. No, I'm, bro, look, this the thing, bro, because I don't be liking when people be like, bro, I don't have nothing against you, bro. Like, I be calling you sometimes. Just you don't post like my artists. Like, you don't post my artists. But I'm glad you don't. Bro, stop. Stop. I just talked to number seven at the shop. The first no, wait, wait, wait. Fuck that. Let me let me talk. The first thing he said when he went up to me, he said, bro, he said, damn, bro, this video got too many guns, huh? I said, I said, you gotta figure it out. No. He already knew why. But outside of that, they just shot, they just dropped to control us with Mo3 and number seven. I mean, number then done done. You didn't Come post on, it. bro. We just we but but posted Mo three going number one. No no no. But 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 let me tell you that thing. When Mo three was alive, you wasn't posting Mo three heavily though. And I, I, what? No no no. You wasn't. You wasn't. What? You wasn't. You brain. You, you are. You I, out of pocket, bro. I, I, I get on. In, I, I get on this Instagram DM right now. Listen. Brain. Listen. Bro, look. Before he died. No look. No look. Before he died, October eleventh. Because this is the last day I talked to him. I posted him. Remember when Cuban Doll said on this shit? What? Remember he was singing and I asked and I asked this, you even said it in Big D interview. You said Sean posted him, they was hating. Now he dead, they love him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nigga, I, I, I did post yeah, Mo 3. Yeah. I stopped posting him because yo ass. Yeah. No, it, but me and Mo 3 relationship was cool. But 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 you can't you can't stop posting me because of him because y'all had your own relationship. You you stop posting. Nah, bro, you was you was talking crazy. Yeah, I had the whole I I, I it stand for something or fall for everything. Yeah, yeah. I, I had to I, stand for something. I understand that. I understand that. So look, uh, you know, uh, you know, I challenge everybody around. So I'm not mad about you not posting. I'm glad you don't post my artists like that because you don't get my artists. You don't get my no. artists. Bro, look, look, bro, look, 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 look. I swear to God, and this is on. This is on audio. This is on camera, bro. Me, you, and three other gatekeepers, DJs. I don't give a fuck, baby. I don't give a fuck. We can all get behind one artist or two and try this shit out. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's no do cap. Because I don't got nothing against you niggas, man. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Why, why, why you say you ain't got nothing against us? 
Cause I, it's not, it's not personal. I feel like everybody got, like you said, everybody got their own motives. I will come together with all. No, I want to because what you, because I never had an artist that be hot on the on 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 the social media. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do. It. Let's go. Cool. All right, before we get out of here, B King. I I did an interview with B King. He said Dallas wanted the street artists until they got Mo three, and then they didn't know how to handle. Him. Nah, they didn't. I remember when the when the dancing shit was happening, niggas was like, "Man, that shit sweet. That shit soft. Man, that don't represent." Cause look, Dallas. let me tell you this. <laughs> let me tell you that this. I have watched street artists. The people in power don't want no street artists. They like puppets. You know, you know, the first person they put behind, they got behind, was the row. Right. The second person was Lil Runny. Lil Runny was on the radio all the time. You know what I'm saying? And then they went to this other kid. That 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 they 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 getting behind. They been behind for the last two years. Any record he got, they play it. You know what I'm saying? But they never give the person the people that our eyes against them. Like Big Chief. Big Chief sold thousands, thousands of copies of CDs. Mr. Lucci, they sold copies of CD. Tum Tum. You know what I'm saying? And you got Mo3. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, sometimes the people in charge, you know, you know, you know, you know, they don't know, they don't know what's, you know, that's why I like Atlanta. That's why I like Houston. DJ Chaotic and Mr. Rogers and down there in Houston are just playing that shit. You know what I'm saying? That's why it's no hate. That's no, that's why it's no hate in Houston because everybody get the same amount of love and a chance. Everybody don't get a chance. Don't. Oh, yes, they do. You're selling dreams. In Houston, most people in Houston get on the radio. Bro. I have seen Young Al on the radio. Hold up. I have seen people in Houston be on the radio right now and nobody in Dallas know who they are. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Rogers gets power at his radio station. Yeah. DJ Chaotic. Yeah. A little E. You know what I'm saying? In Dallas, in Dallas, all the big time people that's in position got artists. I don't, to be honest, I don't. I don't know, bro. But, but in Houston, know. everybody get a If you got a hot banging song or you banging in the streets, they go play your shit. They'll give you a chance. Dallas? Fuck no. Okay. We, we'll change that. Fuck no. Fuck no. Fuck we'll, no. We'll when, Skip, hold up, when Skip Cheatham left, when Candy left the radio stations, it was a complete change. You know what I'm saying? Complete. Like, and it fucked up. Like the whole Dallas area, I mean the whole Dallas music scene got really fucked up. Like back in the day, if you get high at Cirque and you got a little buzz, they jamming your shit on the radio. Skip Cheatham gonna put that right in the mix. They'll give you a chance. So in Dallas right now, that's why it's so much hate because they look at it like, you know, damn, this person getting played and damn, man, fuck them. Now you don't fuck yourself because you don't say fuck them. When 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 they it's like it's like they pick sides. You know what I'm saying? We gonna go to this boy's birthday right here. Oh, we support you, but oh damn damn you got he passed away. Oh we oh we can't go to that candlelight. We can't go to that funeral. Nah hell no nah, hell no. Nah. But we go we go you know what I'm saying? We support you. You know you you know what I'm saying? We gonna play you on the radio, but. He talking to he ain't he talking too much over here. We ain't supporting it. But if everybody had the same equal rights, it, it's no problem. For work for for work people are beefing people in Dallas. If people in DFW is not getting getting views or they not getting recognition unless they beef with each other. It's a lot of people in Fort Worth they should have been playing. You know what I'm saying? If they play if they play Yayo Mo three and Yayo would have never gotten to it. They would have been out doing shows. You know what I'm saying? CJ Casino, Bugatti, they all would have been hot right now. You know what I'm saying? They all would have, they had, Hood Fame was the biggest record label that came out of DFW at that time. I told Mo3, I told, hey, let me know, I told Mo3 he should have been signing artists. Because I watched what Hood Fame got and they fumble. Because, because they weren't getting the support around, you know what I'm saying? If, if, if the radio station, okay, okay, that little kid out there for work got a song called Boom, that, that's booming. Yeah, we finna play that. You, we, we finna play that. They whole little crew would have been around the world. You know what I'm saying? So I believe DFW dropped the ball then.